Hey guys, so we're supposed to have a star party tonight, but it said it was gonna be cloudy. Uh, so I guess most people did not reply and come. It is, it is also October 15th, so which means it's starting to get cool. A big percentage of people, even in the hobby, won't come out because in the night it's actually even chillier. What I wanna show you guys is that I have the Takahashi on the EQ6. Some of you guys in the past have said the scope is too heavy for the mount, and I don't think so. Now, as you see, I'm perfectly balanced in that direction. This direction is perfectly balanced. Same as in this direction here. I have two 12 pound counterweights and one eight pound counterweight. Now this scope here, bare bones, is, actually I'm gonna get you guys closer. So this guy here, is 35 pounds. Now, I do not use a Lozmandis CGE rail. I just use a Vixen rail there, and I just use the rings. So it's probably, let's say, 36 pounds in total. Um, and that's really it. I use a, I'm using a ride gel. I haven't put it on, but you can see the base is right there. So it's very light. So it's about 36 pounds. Yes, this guy is rated for 40 pounds, but it's pretty stable. I do not use the 10 pound extra counterweight here to balance it because a lot of people don't realize normally if you have this ring on the inside because the dew cap actually retracts to this part here. So normally people would have the ring on the inside, right? Uh, but if you put the ring on the outside, it balances without that 10 pound counterweight, no extra weight anyway. It keeps it lighter. So if you use the 10 pound counterweight and then you use the CGE Lozmandis bar, the top, there's a top bar and use the finder scope and all that, you know, this guy can be 45 pounds with that extra 10 pound weight over there to balance it. Like this is 36 pounds. It's not really that heavy. This guy's 40 pounds, but I think it does pretty well. Sure, you can use a bigger mount, but just showing you guys, it's also, it's not really a long two uh, type of thing. Anyway, let's take a look at, that's Jupiter right there. Um, and then Saturn, not sure if you can see it, it's more dimmer. There we go, right there. Okay, and today I am gonna be using a tracking mount which is nice because then I don't always have to be fooling around with um, the slow motion controls. And, oh, I didn't put the finder scope on. You know, technically, a lot of times I don't even, uh, I can just eyeball it like this. And there we go, I believe I found it. So let's go on Saturn first. Let's bump up the power. I'm gonna put a Mead uh, 6.7 ultra wide angle. Uh, so I just recalculated as 164 power, which is looking really, really good. At 164 power, wow. The people that missed the star party, because I was gonna bring this guy to the star party, to show. I give this guy almost, I would say, hour 45 minutes, two hours cool down time. Man, it is sharp. Oh, I see a, maybe three moons. Wow, I gotta blow up this image further. It looks so sharp, you wanna go like even closer and closer. So let's try the Meath Ultra Wide. 4.7 is 234 power. Okay, that should be a good test. Wow, it's almost focused per perfectly. Let me see if I can get it a little bit better. Yeah, Cassini division is very easy. It was a bit sharper in the 6.7. I'm just gonna study it for a bit. Let's put the camera over here then. Let's try to find the right combination. This is a little bit high of power but my power made five times with an 18 millimeter uh, Mead 
4,000, the Japan super wide angle. It does give me a little bit high at uh, like 305 power. Oh, I can see a shadow cast from the planet to the, uh, the rings. I mean, for 305 power, it's actually performing very well. Sometimes you just have to wait until uh, the condition is perfect. Yeah, Cassini division is pretty easy. I'm going to back down a bit anyway, make a little less power. Let's go back down to the 4.7, which was a 234, which is pretty healthy. Yeah, and this might be a little bit better because it's a little bit sharper. So probably better to be a little sharper and a little bit bigger. Okay, let me see if I can give you guys a quick uh, view. It looks okay. You know, even using your cell phone camera adapter, like um, the XYZ one, it still has a lot of like, uh, I don't know, it takes a long time to kind of get it perfect. Okay, let's go over to Jupiter. Oh, you need a low power. It's a way to do astrophotography, but let's see what I got. Okay, again, no finder scope. Again, okay, there we go, I found it. Okay, we got three moons on the left, one moon on the right. The 6.7 ultra wide. See how. So, for you guys that want to do cell phone astrophotography, it can be done, but you know. Sometimes feel like that basic one that I used to have for like 20 bucks is a little bit better than the $80 one. I don't like the way it attaches onto the eyepiece. Easily see the two big bands of Jupiter. You know, I, I think I'm going to change my uh, camera adapter. Um, I just don't like this one. And the reason is this part here. Uh, let me show you. So, you know what, let me put you guys in the light. So, for instance, it comes with like this thing here. And you put it around your eyepiece. So you put this around your eyepiece. Like that. And then this guy kind of clamps to it like that. But there's there's a lot of play in this guy. Even when you, there's a orange thumb screw here. There's, it's like, there's some play there. I don't like that. I think they have another one where it actually clamps onto the eyepiece. Um, I think that would be better. Anyway, you know, they sell these guys for like 80 bucks. And I just don't like this handle thing here. It's just, and I don't like these things here either. Anyway, guys, I'm going to pack it up for today. Anyway, guys, I'll see you next time. Um, hopefully I got some okay videos and shots out of uh, Saturn there. And um, yeah. Is this guy cool enough? I got no jacket on, just like a thin sweater. So I'm gonna go inside. I'll see you guys next time. For you guys that are on the forums, if there's anybody that's asking about a video that I did, you can share my link. 
Why not you? Why not me? Hey guys. So I just was looking at the video while I was editing it and it actually, Saturn doesn't look too good on the video, but in the eyepiece it actually looked pretty good. Very good, extremely good. But that's what you get when you use a cell phone astrophotography, doesn't look that great.